Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to tell you the number one reason why you are not getting better at tennis. Guys, you hear this sound? This is the sound that you are lacking and is the reason why you're not getting better at tennis. Now, let me explain that in a little more detail. One of the biggest differences between a high level player and a recreational level player is the amount of intensity players are incorporating into their game under specific circumstances. So here's the deal. In a live ball setting, I'm not talking about a coach working with you because that's an artificial setting. In a live ball setting or in a match setting, recreational players will have a lot of intensity when the situation requires them to have intensity. For example, when they're playing and a opponent hits a drop shot or they hit a ball in the corner naturally the recreational player will react to that ball and they will move to the ball with a lot of intensity however when the ball appears to be easy this is where recreational players fall into a trap and they don't play with a lot of intensity they are intuitively not moving enough not setting up enough and are therefore forced to improvise their technique and look guys, it doesn't matter how good your technique is, when you're improvising on the court, your technique goes out the window. It is absolutely impossible to execute a fundamentally sound stroke when you're not set up well. For example, the ball goes into your body and you don't get out of the way and you have to play the ball like this. It doesn't matter how good your technique is, you're gonna be forced to hit a very inferior shot or something that's very common at the rec level when you're too far away from the ball, you have to reach this way now the body is completely disengaged, you probably have to play the ball with your wrist to get it back in play. Or most commonly at the recreational level, players will not get close enough to the ball in a forward sense, so they will reach this way and shovel the ball back in play. And that's why I say that it doesn't matter how good your technique is, when you're forced in these situations and you're not set up well enough, your technique will go out the window and you will be halted in your development as a tennis player because let's face it practicing is one thing when a coach is feeding the ball in your slot but playing a live ball and playing matches is something completely different and the tricky thing about tennis is that the ball can come at you a million different ways and you're gonna have to play with intensity if you want to have any chance at improving in this game now guys I said players are intuitively not moving when they should and yes I meant to say that they're intuitively standing around because here's the deal naturally when the ball appears to be coming easy or in other words it appears to come right at the person it is natural it is intuitive to not move and reduce the amount of intensity this happens to absolutely everyone that plays the game of tennis as a beginner or an intermediate player it is something that will occur naturally and you have to bypass this intuition that you have and start moving even when you don't have to. And why would you want to do that? Well, like I said, the ball in tennis is going to come at you a million different ways. It is always going to come at you a little different. The tennis ball is going to be very unpredictable, especially at the recreational level where a lot of players don't have sound technique and they all get all kinds of unintended different little spins and underspins and side spins on the ball. Even though the ball at the rec level might be coming slower than at the high level, it is a very tricky ball to set up. So here's the thing that I see at the recreational level, all the way up to the 4.5 level. I don't see it as much as the 5.0 level, but just take a look at your local club and uh, see some players uh, playing doubles and you'll see the following thing players will stand around they will have their heels planted into the ground and they're playing the balls like this now of course as i said before when the ball goes into the corner or goes forward naturally these players will move and they will play with intensity they might even recover back quickly but then again when that ball comes right at them uh, they will just be standing around and is one of the biggest causes of errors at the rec level I didn't now standing around is not something you're gonna see at the high level why because you cannot play high level tennis if you don't have intensity take a look at any high level tennis player it could be your best junior at your club it could be a college player it could be a professional player all of them 
even on balls that appear to be easy they are setting up they're moving their feet and they are squeaking those shoes take a listen to this you hear the shoes squeaking that is those little adjustment steps that you need in order to prevent the ball catching you the wrong way and forcing you to improvise your shots that was out now it's not only the fact that a lot of recreational players are not moving their feet when the ball appears to be easy but from a mental standpoint they also relax they become nonchalant and not only is the intensity out of their feet gone the intensity is gone out of the whole body because they are underestimating the ball and they're playing in a nonchalant way when the intensity goes out of the, out of the feet it's going to go out of your entire body and your stroke your mechanics are going to suffer as a result of it So for all you guys that have this habit of standing around and not being on your toes, I'm going to give you a great drill that you can do without an opponent, without a coach, you can self-feed. So obviously on a self-feed we can control the feet quite well and we can get away with not moving and still hit a quality shot. But you're not going to do that anymore. You're going to self-feed but you're going to move like crazy and make those shoes squeak. I'm going to show you a few examples. See how my shoes are squeaking? I don't really have to move but I'm moving anyway. I'm providing entire body intensity and I'm preventing to be surprised the last second by the ball you see my feet I am not setting early I'm moving way into the stroke and I'm playing these balls with a lot of intensity and look guys it's gonna feel really weird when you start doing this because it's gonna be more natural to stand around when you're playing a rally where you guys are going back and forth to each other you're trying to hit the ball to each other it's gonna feel super weird and your opponent might think that you lost your mind when you start doing what I'm asking you to do because you're not going to allow yourself to have the heels touch the ground. What I mean by that, you're not going to have this part of your foot on the ground anymore. You're going to have to raise this part of your foot. I have heard of some devices where, I don't know if these are legal by the way, and I don't approve of them by any means, but I've heard some tennis parents have devices such as putting tennis balls underneath the heel like the dad of Marion Bartoli or other th things such as electric shockers where they're forcing the kids to get those heels off the ground so you are not going to allow your heels to touch the ground anymore because some players that I try to teach this intensity to they will start moving around but they're kind of stomping on the ground like they're stomping grapes they're going like this this is the wrong way to do it guys this is going to look weird and it's not going to give you any benefits because why do we want to be on our toes when we're moving because on our toes once we have to make that move and change our direction or get to the ball we can do this very quickly when you look at sprinters when they get out of the blocks they are on their toes they're not on the heels this is the fastest way to react is when we have our weight more towards the toes of our feet and you don't have to bounce around like crazy like a rabbit and go like this just slightly getting off the ground it doesn't even have to be that high as long as you're doing this this is going to be sufficient you always keep those heels off the ground and then when that ball comes you do little steps like this you see these little steps setting up you see how my shoes are squeaking this is what you need to do to find that ball perfectly and to set it up perfectly and then you're not going to be forced anymore to improvise an old school way to teach you to be more on your toes is jumping over the lines on the court with both feet or with one foot and in different directions like this and then with one foot like this these are going to be great ways to learn how to get the heels off the ground however nothing beats this type of movement within the context of the incoming ball because you got to remember the reason why you're not moving is not because you're lazy or because you're slow no it is a natural way to play tennis it is an intuitive way to play tennis and that is to play it by the incoming ball and most players get tricked that way because they associate a ball that appears to be easy with not having to move and you have to bypass this intuition that every novice tennis player has and start moving even when it appears that you don't have to. And the first step for you is going to be self-feeding as I already demonstrated where you're going to move a lot off a self-feed then you transition into real feeds from your coach or your friend 
and then you transition into live ball where you are trying to move all the time not just when the ball is away from you and then finally when you've trained this movement long enough your body will memorize it and it will be there for you in a match situation.